Hi. Uh, uranium is a, is a fairly common uh, material on the planet. It's a heavy metal. And as most of us know, it's radioactive. Now, radioactivity is, a, is an interesting phenomenon, uh, fascinating. I am far from an expert. Um, but, you know, it, it, it naturally evokes uh, some anxiety, and as well it should. But uh, what I wanted to do was to simply summarize just a little bit about uh, what I'm experiencing when I, when I deal with uranium glass which uh, I get mostly in the, in the form of vintage marbles or vintage beads uh, and the occasional uh, uranium glass plate or something that's been broken. Because I modify these, I, I, I will use them as raw material uh, to make jewelry, and it's fairly common practice. Uh, but people will often ask, is the uranium glass dangerous? Because uh, it, after all, contains uranium. And that's kind of a, that's always a difficult question because all things have the potential to be dangerous. And radioactivity is no different. It's all around us. So I think more appropriately, I, what, I, what I try to make clear or try to, to convey is that, um, the, the, the uranium glass itself is, is in all likelihood no more dangerous than a banana. Um, it, it, it could be, but, but it's very unlikely. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to convey a little bit of my understanding about the reasoning behind this. So what we do is I will eventually, of course, cut this uh, using a diamond saw. And I take standard precautions, uh, not so much for the radiation exposure as the silicates. It's, it's glass. And uh, you don't want to inhale particles of glass. And you definitely don't want to inhale particles of glass that might contain a radioactive element. Uh, and furthermore, it is a heavy metal. So not unlike lead in glass, you would want to take standard precautions for that reason, if, if nothing else. So it turns out, however, that the amount of radiation in one of these marbles, let alone a, a cabochon that might be a quarter or a third the mass, is negligible. It, it, it is not statistically detectable above background, generally speaking. Now that said, it, it is still radioactive, and one should be uh, aware of that. But uh, it's an interesting phenomenon, and I hope that I can convey my limited understanding of it uh, to, to, to let folks be, be more comfortable about dealing with uranium glass. So in general, radioactivity is something that uh, happens with uh, large-ish uh, nuclei. And uh, as a particle decays, uh, the, it, it will give off mass and energy spontaneously. And ultimately, the, the nature of that thing will, will also change. So uranium, starting off as a very heavy element, will ultimately decay and uh, a little bit of it will turn into uh, another element, radium. Uh, and then radium will decay over time, and eventually it will become radon, uh, the radioactive gas that can cause so much trouble. And on and on and on, um, in, in a very characteristic uh, process, until you ultimately get different isotopes of lead and uh, other very, very heavy metals that are much more stable. Anyway, the radiation that is being given off is called ionizing radiation because it, it carries enough energy that when it's absorbed by matter, it will, it will you know, it'll knock electrons off or it'll, it'll knock uh, bits of the uh, positive charges off or add positive charges. And the most common is alpha particles. Uh, which are very heavy. Uh, they don't travel hardly at all. Uh, it's very common kind of, kind of radiation, and uh, typically it's it's not as dangerous in the sense that it can be it, it can have trouble even penetrating your skin. The the difficulty becomes that if you internalize that kind of thing, uh, then it has direct access to the to 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 your body and the cells, and that that that's what makes it dangerous. 
um, or most dangerous. Beta particles are fairly common. Those are going to be electrons, basically, that are, that are traveling uh, not quite at the speed of light. In fact, quite a bit slower than the speed of light. And they do have mass. Uh, they're not very heavy, but they have mass. And then there are gamma rays, which are very, very high energy photons or light. And so those are the ones that uh, carry a great deal of damaging uh, ionizing radiation. I will be using a, uh, a relatively inexpensive radiation detector, most commonly called a Geiger counter. Um, but uh, what this does is it, it has a tube in it that's filled with gas. And uh, if, what, what they've done is they've created a circuit that just puts a high voltage across the gas. And whenever a particle whacks into a molecule of gas, it, of course, ionizes it, which means it makes it electrically charged. And that means that you can detect events of uh, the changes in the electrical charge of the voltage. And so every little blip or click represents uh, one interaction of a radioactive particle. Now this inexpensive uh, monitor that I'm using, uh, it, it, it would be very poor, relatively poor, at detecting the alpha particles because you know, it, it has a plastic case and, and the gas is just not optimized for that. Um, but in general, uh, it, it, it's quite good for the purpose that I use it for, which is qualitative comparisons of different materials. Um, I also, as you'll notice, it, it, it makes an audible click. But in case you want to buy one of these things, they cost about $50. Um, you need to be aware that they it does not come with the audible click feature. Uh, I, I opened it up and, and violated the warranty and I soldered a resistor uh, to bleed a little current from the LED that's being activated uh, to make a little audible click just because I find that the human auditory system is exquisitely able to detect uh, differences or changes in frequency much more readily than your, your eyes can process information about that. So these are examples of uh, some radioactive materials. Uh, this is a half marble, a full marble. This is a cluster of 17 marbles. And over there are some radium watch dials uh, that you've probably heard about um, from way back when. Um, these are glow in the dark, and they're glow in the dark because of the radiation uh, that's emitting energy. Um, but this is this is what a, a single marble might look like, and it, it, it's a pretty green. Now, if, if they've added um, an iron compound to the glass in addition to the uranium oxide, it will be an even deeper green, uh, which was a pop popular thing to do for a while. But in any event, w one of the characteristics of this glass is that under UV illumination, this is just a UV LED, you see that it has a very characteristic uh, ethereal type green glow, and, and that's really uh, distinctive. And so it's, it's, it's fairly common uh, to be able to use UV light and, and determine that it's almost certainly uranium glass. So you can see that these fluoresce very, very nicely. Now, notice over here too that the radium dials also fluoresce quite brightly. You can probably see them even at this distance. The difference being that when I take the uranium or take the UV off, if this were dark, those continue to glow a little bit, whereas the marbles do not. So what's happening here is that the it's not the radioactive portion that's responsible for the glow here. This is uh, fluorescence, and what's happening is there's th that, that the material is absorbing the ultraviolet light, which is a short wavelength, high energy, short wavelength. And as the uh, electrons decay back into their uh, orbits, they are re-emitting uh, some light, photons, but the light that's being re-emitted has to be at a lower energy than the light that was absorbed, because no process is perfect. And that's exactly what happens. So that the, the light being absorbed is ultraviolet on the blue end, very short wavelength. And then green light is a much longer wavelength than, than, the, than the UV. And so that is what's happening here. It's, it's basically acting as a phosphor or a phosphorescent. Now what's happening over with the uh, radium glass, uh, radium watch dials, I understand it is that it's not the radium per se itself that's responsible directly for the light that's being emitted. What's happening here, though, is that um, 
in addition to the radium, the, the really vanishingly small amount of radium that's, that's on those watch dials, they have painted or mixed with the paint a phosphor. Um, again, in, if it were modern days, it would be a strontium compound. I don't know what it would have been in, in the old days. And what will happen is that the half-life of radium is, is much shorter than that of uranium, but it's still in the thousand plus years mark. So watch dials after about 20 to 30, 40 years, they lose their glow in the dark or much of their glow in the dark. Uh, capability, but that's not because they're no longer radioactive. They're still very radioactive. If the half-life is, say, a thousand years, then after a hundred years, it still hasn't lost hardly any of its radioactive energy. But what happens is that the uh, continual bombardment of the phosphor by the radioact radioactive particles will eventually break down the phosphor. And so it, it continues to emit radioactivity, but they will dim over time in terms of their glow in the dark. So I hope uh, that helps a little bit understanding what's happening here. So here are the uh, watch dials. And I just want to point out that uh, the phosphor in these is old enough to have been degraded, but it's still present because uh, unlike the uranium glass, um, when I hit this with ultraviolet, of course, it glows very, very brightly. Now, as I withdraw the ultraviolet light, though, you'll notice that these will continue to glow at least for a little bit. And of course, if these were brand new, they would glow quite brightly uh, all the time. And uh, what has happened, I think, is not that the radiation has diminished. We, we can see that there's still radiation present but that the phosphor has been degraded. So you'll notice that this is a uh, Geiger counter of sorts. Um, it's a relatively inexpensive one, and I, it normally does not click. I modified it uh, by jumping a resistor between the LED and the uh, uh, alarm sound so that it would uh, give audible clicks. Anyway, I'm just going to test these three different uh, or four different situations. You see here on the far left is a uranium glass marble that's been cut in half. Here's UV. And, and that resembles uh, a large cabochon. So I would normally cut something probably half to a third that size. That's a whole marble. And you notice that it, it, it's a little brighter. In here, in this container, is a group of 17 vintage marbles from the turn of the 20th century. And then over here, at the far right, are four tiny little watch dials from, a vintage, wa from vintage watches. And those have radium in them. So I want to compare the radioactivity readings in these different sources. So first let's, this is background basically, uh, so let's go take a look at the half marble. Yeah, as expected, and you know, pretty much they're going to be at or, you know, right, right around indistinguishable from background. So here's the whole marble. Now here's the group of 17. So you can see that there is uranium in it, but it's it's you got to get 17 to 20 of these marbles together to uh, get a, a believable reading. Now let's take a look at the radium dials. So you'll notice that the, the radium is substantially more radioactive than 
uh, even the group of, of 17 marbles. And that's to be expected, even though notice that the, the amount of radium painted on these dials is really incredibly small. Okay, but that, that gives you a good indication of the comparative nature of this, where the, the largest peak are those little tiny watch dials. And the rest of these are the uh, uranium glass. So you see this, uh, right, uranium, uh, the most common isotope of uranium, by the way, is not fissible, meaning that you can't make a bomb out of it. Um, it, it, it wouldn't absorb uh, enough energy to become uh, self-sustaining. Anyway, uh, that uranium, yes, it has a half-life of four and a half billion years. So that means it takes that long for half of this uranium to decay into something else. Then notice that uh, it will eventually become, as it loses mass, it will become radium. So radium will be a, a, a vanishingly small contaminant of any naturally occurring uranium. And this is what allowed the Curies, Pierre and Marie Curie, to uh, identify and ultimately discover the presence of radium. Um, they had to purify enormous quantities of uranium or pitch blend and uh, found that the radiation in the residual as they removed uranium actually went up. Um, radium, it turned out, is much more uh, radioactive even than uranium. And uh, so they, the, the, the couple shared the Nobel Prize uh, for the discovery of, of radium. And, uh, of course, eventually Marie went on and, and uh, developed procedures to isolate various kinds of radioactive isotopes and won a Nobel Prize, a second Nobel Prize in chemistry. And like all things, uh, the public press and, and uh, marketers took it up and for, a, for quite some time radium was considered to be a cure-all and, and was marketed. And of course you've, you've heard of the, the devastating effects probably of uh, the, the people, the, the women especially, who were painting those watch dials with uranium and internalizing uh, with radium and, and internalizing that material. Uh, and, and ultimately dying. So it's not to be trifled with, but uh, it makes sense to realize that uranium itself, uh, although it's radioactive, is not particularly inherently dangerous. Uh, but the, the substances that will uh, eventually come from it uh, can become themselves, if concentrated, uh, more of an issue.